Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this PS4 Slim which has been sent in. This console has been sent in because it's not turning on. So we're going to take a look, we're going to see what's going on with it first and then we're going to see if we can fix it. But while I've got your attention, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button now before you realise how much of a boring old fart I am and decide not to do it at the end. Also, I am now streaming on Twitch, so if you want to catch some live streams, please go ahead and give me a follow on Twitch. The link will be in the video description. And if you're feeling really, really generous, you can stop me having to eat dust for supper by using your free Amazon Prime subscription on me over on Twitch. So you can link your Amazon Prime subscription, and then you can subscribe to your favourite channel, and that, of course, is me. So, yeah, you can... Uh, you can do that, and uh, that support me and what I do. With that being said, let's see what's going on with it. So, okay, no point putting the HDMI cable in here. It's not turning on. No beep. And no power from the front panel either. Okay, so I'm going to try, first of all, offering a disc up to it to see if it's an issue with the front panel. Nope. So inserting a disc doesn't turn it on, which means that we're basically getting no power at all to the system. Okay, so this has come from Console Repair London, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, then you'll know that Console Repair London sends me all of the more complex stuff, such as the micro soldering stuff. And he usually checks the power supply first. I believe this is the CUH 2016. And I think I should have a power supply for that. I'm not sure. But if I've got a power supply, I'll test it. But I'm gonna but I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here and say that we've probably got a good power supply in here. Okay, that's a bit stuck. Okay, is this liquid damaged? That was very, very stuck. Strange. Yeah, it's still stuck, look. I mean, this side's fine, that side pops out, but... That side is pretty stuck in there. Interesting. So there's a chance here that this is liquid damage then because the hard drive cover is stuck in. So there is a chance that it's liquid damaged. Um, I'm going to be gutted if that's the case because I reballed a safe bridge in anticipation of this video. So I'm going to be pretty good to you if it's just liquid damage and not the safe bridge. So I've got a safe bridge here ready. It's the CXD 90042GG. And I reballed that this morning. As you can see, looking beautiful. So I've got a safe bridge there ready. And I know that safe bridge works as well. It's come from a known good board, but with a Renesas issue. So the board couldn't be fixed, basically. But non good board, Renesas issue, and I know the safe bridge works because the board does turn on. Or it did turn on until I stole the safe bridge. Alright, so step number one then is I'm going to try popping the power supply back in. Now I've got the case off. And I'm basically going to just check and see if we've got 5 volts on the power supply. Just to see if we're getting any kind of power going in. We can't check for 12 volts because that's not activated until immediately after you press the power button. It sends a signal back to the power supply to enable 12 volts. It's a power saving thing, I think. It's an annoying thing because it means we can't check for 12 volts. Not until the console's on. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to check for 5 volts. So I'm going to pop in the power cable there. And I'm going to take the multimeter in voltage mode. DC voltage mode. I'm going to pop one probe on ground. Doesn't look like we've got five volts. In fact, it looks like something shorted.
sorry, no, that's 12 volts. What am I doing? Oh, dear. Well, that'll teach me. All right, so... Yeah, we've got 4.88 volts, so we've got 5 volts. I'm sitting there probing the 12 volt for some reason. All right, so first thing I'm going to look for then is going to be any signs of burnt components, any signs of damage, that sort of thing, any signs that anyone's done any work on this. And right off the bat, I'm not seeing anything. And I'm not seeing anything on this side either. So there's nothing immediately throwing itself at me. So let's check these caps. I'll pop under the microscope and we'll check around this area here for a short to ground and see if we've got an issue with the safe bridge. Okay, so you can see a massive bunch of capacitors and things here. And this is usually where we can test for shorts on the safe bridge. Obviously, it's a BGA chip, so we need to test the capacitors that are connected to it. So that's on the back of the board. So I'm going to pop the multimeter into continuity mode. That's the mode that's going to beep when we complete the circuit. And that's going to tell us if we've got a short to ground. So I'm going to test these caps on the top. And yes, we do. We do have a short to ground on the safe bridge. So literally within a few seconds, just by testing that, little area there that's telling me that we've got a short to ground on the safe bridge and that we're going to need to replace it so like i said this is the cxd 90042gg it's marked with sie that's sony interactive entertainment it is a custom chip but you can buy them they're around about 15 pounds they're not cheap but it's certainly cheaper than replacing a motherboard if this is what has failed on yours so I'm going to get this removed, so I'm going to add some flux first of all, that's going to help the solder to flow. Notice how I pronounce solder the correct way. Not like Lewis Rossman from Rossman Repair Group, who misses the L and pronounces it solder. If you don't know who Lewis Rossman is, uh, I'll leave a link in the video description to his channel. He's an absolutely awesome guy. Uh, doing a lot of work for Right to Repair, and uh, I've got the utmost respect for him, except when he pronounces solder incorrectly. incorrectly. Alright, so I've got my hot air set to 420 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow here. I'm using the Atom ST862D, a lot of people ask me that question. There are links in the video description to most of the stuff that I use, they are the affiliate links as well. Okay, so I've preheated the board, now I'm going to come in and start warming it up properly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to heat up. And I'm going to come in and nudge the chip every so often. There we go, so you see the chip move. And that means it's safe to lift. And what I need to do now is just clean up this entire area. So I need to remove the solder that's on here because we need to solder a new chip on which has already got balls on it. And we need those solder balls to be even so as they all make a contact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the solder that's on here with leaded solder. And that's going to lower the melting temperature and allow me to wick it a lot safer than if it was lead-free solder. If we were trying to wick lead-free solder, then it would likely tear the traces because it's got a much higher melting temperature. So I'll get some leaded solder. I'm using Kester uh, 6337, I believe it is. And this is a 0.3 millimetre. If you're wondering where to buy Kester from, I'll buy it from Amazon US and have it imported. Well, actually, it was Console Repair London that brought this for me. 
And he didn't bite, he ordered it for me. Off his Amazon. Alright, so there's the solder replaced. Should be safe to wick now. I'm going to grab some solder wick. This is Goot Wick. CP2515, 2.5mm. And I'm going to just cut some off so as I can wick it away in smaller quantities. It allows for better heat transfer if you cut the wick down instead of leaving it on the reel. And also, the reel ends up melting if you don't cut it off. Because it is just a plastic reel. Okay, so there's one piece of wick. And I'm just going to gently go around and just clean up this solder. Going in a circular motion at all times. And the reason I go in a circular motion is because I don't want to put any excess pressure on the pads. If you go in a circular motion, it reduces the risk of damaging them. Okay, I think that piece of wick is done for. Let's grab a fresh piece. One little tip is if you find yourself struggling, what you can do is you can just get some hot air and just add a little bit of hot air while you're wicking. And that'll make your life a little bit simpler. There you go. Alright, next I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab. While the board is still warm, I'm going to just clean up this burnt flux. The flux is always going to be easier to clean up if the board is warm. Now you'll notice as it's starting to cool down, it's going to get a bit more difficult to clean. Okay, um, now because I've got some up by this secondary ram, I'm going to just give it a clean with a toothbrush. But now that it's dried up, you'll see that it's going to be difficult to clean. And somehow we have solder balls here. How have we got bits of solder there? That's kind of worrying, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. Alright, just warm that up. And then you'll see it cleans up nicely. But that is kind of worrying that we've got little random bits of solder balls there. Solder squeezage, as it's called. I'm wondering if that's been reflowed in the past. 
the safe bridge at me. I mean. And I don't think it would have come from under the secondary ram, but if we still don't get any peril to replace the safe bridge, I might have to re-ball that, to be honest. Alright, so just about ready to install this new safe bridge then. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of flux, not much. Just a little bit of flux. And I'm going to spread it around evenly. Shouldn't really be using my hands for this, but... Meh. Can't be bothered to find gloves. And then I'm going to take my freshly reballed safe bridge, which I made earlier. And let's just inspect that. I think I saw something on here earlier. Some something stuck on one of the corners. I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, I think it's just here, is it? I think there was something stuck. I just couldn't be bothered to deal with it, to be honest. It was just a piece of fluff or something, if I can remember. Yeah, there we go, that's got it. Cool. Okay, right, so we've got some guides on the chip, or rather on the board itself where the chip goes. You can see the brown guides in the corners, so we can just get that roughly in line. But what I like to do is I like to press down on the chip, so I'll get it roughly in line, just like that. And then if I press down on the chip, when it's in place, so you can see it's sliding all over the place there. But then when I get it in place... It's going to lock in because all of the balls are making a contact. So when I wiggle it with my fingers, it shouldn't move. And that tells me that it's in position. Okay, so for this part now, I do need accuracy. So I'll zoom in. But like I said, I do need accuracy here. So I need to be able to hold my hot air right the way up like that. So unfortunately, you're not going to see a lot. But there's just not enough room underneath the microscope to hold the, the hot air like that. And I don't want to use a nozzle because that would inc increase the airflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my hot air to 420 again. Uh, actually, let's go 400. So I'll go 400 because this is leaded solder. And I'm going to go for 20% airflow. And I'm just going to flow the chip down in place. Okay, and now I'm going to increase the 420 at 40% 40 airflow. And I'm going to add some flux. So the reason I add a minimal amount of flux and then add more later is because I don't want the chip to float around. So now I can flow it in fully using 420 degrees Celsius. And that should be done. So I'm going to let the board cool down because I don't want to end up causing thermal shock. And if we cool this board down too quickly, there's a chance it could damage the components. So I'll leave that for a couple of minutes. And then obviously I want it to cool down enough to clean it up and also to test it. Right, okay. So here we go. Ready to clean it up and then give it a test. So I'm just going to use some warm air quickly, just to warm the flux back up. There we go. I don't bother changing the hot air temperature. I just obviously don't leave it long enough to flow solder or do any kind of damage to the board. It just makes it easier to clean. But I'm just going to basically scrub it with isopropyl alcohol all the way around, including the outer perimeter because the flux flows off to the sides as well. So we want to clean up the entire board, make sure that there's no flux left there. 
If this was my board and I'd sent it to someone for repair, I would not want them to send it back covered in flux. So I don't do that to my own customers. Okay, there we go. So that should be nice and clean. Let's just dry it off. Awesome. Okay, let's test this area again and just confirm that there's no short. I'll leave it out of the microscope. You already know where they are. So I'll just leave it as it is. No short. Good. Excellent. No shorts. So the reason I test those specific capacitors and coils is because that's not a low impedance line. So that usually tells me if there's an issue because it's usually those specific pads which end up short or whatever is on that line. It's usually that what ends up short and it's usually the safe with what causes it. Okay, that's enough screws. So I just wanted to hold it down, make sure that it's not gonna fall out on me. So that's all lined up. So as if we do get this to turn on, I don't need to worry about taking it back apart. I can leave that unscrewed, it's just a Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, here we go, moment of truth, is it going to work? Let's make sure there's nothing shorting out, and there's not. Here we go. We get a single beep. We get a single beep. Oh. oh no. Right, let me just grab a power supply just in case. Right, so this is a non good power supply. Yeah. It's not the power supply. Didn't think it would be. Right, I'll see if I can offer up a disc to it. No. Let's unplug the power. No. Right, I honestly don't know what else could be wrong with this, to be honest with you. Unfortunately. Right, okay, so off camera, I'm going to reball re another safe bridge and I'm going to replace this once more and then I'm giving up on it. So I've got a safe bridge here which I'm going to take off and I'm going to set the hot air to 400 degrees to remove it. Actually, I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go 380 degrees Celsius just in case. And yeah, I'll re another safe bridge. I'll replace it again once more and uh, I'll see what happens. Right, so I've got myself a fresh safe bridge here, freshly re -balled. Pretty annoying, to be honest. 
that I've even had to do that. So now I'm going to either be really, really happy or I'm going to deeply regret trying to put another safe bridge on because that's the second one I've reballed for this job. Okay, let's get this safe bridge off. Okay, let's clean up. Perfect. Uh, this has just picked up a solder ball from on the table. Good. That's got it. All right. Moment of truth. Yes! Yes! We get a blue light. Awesome. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yes. So the reason that's safe to do is because there was no 12 volt there. So that means that it's not going to attempt to turn on, which means it's not going to overheat the APU. Okay, we get a blue light. Now the question is, does it go to a white light? Does it go to a six second blue light of death? Does it go to a two second blue light of death? Oh, wow. I can't believe that it must have killed a non-good Southbridge during the installation. But that's the problem with using donor chips, is that can happen. Let's take the power button. Moment of truth. We've got fan spin. I think. Yes, we have. No immediate heat spots, that's good. Yes! Yes, we have a white light. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Let's plug in a HDMI cable. Oh, I cannot tell you how happy I am right now to see that white light. Oh, I have never been so happy to see a white light. I say don't look into the light, but honestly, it's good for you. All right, do we get a display? Come on, show me a display. Okay, it's just rebooting. Um, it's just decided to reboot. Checking system storage status, I assume. Come on, display. Come on, you've got no reason not to display now. Oh. What is that, flux in the port? Huh. Yes! Connection issue on the HDMI. <sighs> All I'm going to say is, wow. Wow, chat. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am almost certain that the PS4 Pro that I took that off, the board turned on. So, honestly, I don't know why it didn't work. But, as you can see, it's working now. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, this came in for no power. Uh, I do need to do a full test. I need to also uh, reassemble it and things like that. But... Uh, that's for off video. Uh, this video is going to be going on for long enough. So this came in for no power. And obviously one of the main causes of no power, as I said earlier on, is the safe bridge. Uh, in this case, it's the CXD 9042GG. You can test that by looking at the capacitors and the uh, inductors underneath the safe bridge, as I showed you on the microscope. If they show up short, then most likely you've got a safe bridge issue. And we've learned something else as well. If it beeps once, but nothing happens, then it can be a safe bridge issue. So that's something else that we've learned uh, while we was doing this repair. So, you know, it's a win-win. Obviously, I've probably lost a safe bridge in the process, and these are bloody expensive. So it looks like I am eating dust tonight because I've got to save some money. So, yeah, it looks like I've lost a safe bridge. So I need to sort a re ball one. Didn't work. Didn't didn't turn on and uh, the second one a random board that I pulled out of the pile behind me seemed to work fine but uh, yeah that being said this console is now working again and hopefully the customer is going to get many many more years of life out of this console but that's going to be for this video thank you very much for watching if you do have any comments or questions leave them down in the comment section down below I will always do my best to answer of course if you want to organize your own repair you can do so by using the website in the video description that will take you to my online booking page you'll find some price lists for some common issues but if the price that you need isn't there just drop me an email using the contact page and i'll get back to you with a custom quote if you enjoy this type of content be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever i upload and if you want to support what i do you can do so by using the patreon link in the video description you can become a channel member using the join button down below the video or you can just click on some of the affiliate links in the video description as well. It all helps and I really, really appreciate it.